or you can also use, actually I think it's called spackle. And I always like to get the pre-mixed ones because I think the powder version is 25 pounds and I never have a repair that's 25 pounds. <laughs> and you will also need some water and a rag. And then here's the magic stuff. And then these are the two that I normally use. I like the Homex brand. I'm not even sure if they make another one. And one is water-based, it's orange. And the second one is oil-based, it's red. I've had a lot more luck with the water-based brand or, or version. One thing that I have noticed, I've done a lot of these repairs. And either the product is getting better or it really matters on the heat and the humidity and I think it's the latter. When it's hot and humid, when you spray this stuff on your wall, it drips. And that does not look so good. Another thing it does is that it gets bubbles in it and when those bubbles pop, it looks like pimples that have been popped on your wall. And so that does not look good. So if you're going to be doing one of these repairs, what I would recommend is to do it when the heat and the humidity are lower. So let's go over some of the steps. And now, I've, oh, I've found my hair tie so that it's not in my face <laughs> when I'm doing my little repair here. And so I tried to do some steps prior to coming here so that we can save some time. And of course, I have something to demonstrate. And here is my pseudo wall. And I apologize, man, it smells like crazy. I don't know if this <laughs> went bad. But what I want to show you is when you have the hole in the wall, the first thing that you want to do is smooth out your surface. Now, you could see if you look from this angle that it is not exactly smooth. I am going to show you the best way to sand it and it is with a rag and water. And all you do is do circular motions to make it smooth. Now you can see that those lines are coming out. Now it has small lines still in it, but what you have to remember is you're going to use your texture on it. So once that dries and becomes smooth, then you take your Homex wall texture and you just spray it. Now in this instance, remember, less is more. Because if you look at the surface of the wall, if you put too many, too much in one area, it's going to look like an ant mound. And that's not what you want. You just want to kind of put it in, uh, cover the area, but not have it solid. Now, if you make a mistake, this material is very similar to this material. And so what you can do again is use your rag and your water. I've even had instances where it just has not come out well. I just wash it clean, start over. Now when you're painting it, what you wanna do is you wanna make sure that you don't prime it. I know it says prime it, but here's the thing. You're doing a, a, a repair and when you prime it, the, t the sheen is different. So what I do is I put a, a multiple uh, coats of paint rather than priming it because the primer will make your paint look different. The other thing I wanted to show you real quickly is if you are doing a ceiling, to spray this over your head creates a mess <laughs> and it's almost impossible to keep clean. So what I do, and this is something that I came up with on my own, is I'm thinking, okay, well, what really is this product? It cleans up exactly like this product. So what I do is I take this, and because of time, I will just demonstrate quickly, is I just take it with my finger, and I just blot it in these areas. What I then do is I take my flexible spatula, and I just smooth it out. Now, I did this at home, and you could see it's not perfect. You can get it to be perfect depending on how much time you want to spend on it. Again, my handy dandy wet rag, 
as you can see, there's all these edges. You just take the rag and you smooth out the edges. Now, if you get real aggressive, you will be back to your smooth wall, which is not what you want. So if that happens, all you do is you take some more and you really just make it like little pimples. Take your spatula, do it again. Depending on the thickness of the lace on your ceiling will determine how many times you'll have to do it. In one area in my house where I had the tape coming down, what I did was it took me three times to get this to the right texture. Now, in another area, I said, I'm not gonna take those three times. I'm just gonna glop it on. Well, I glopped it on, well, guess what? It was too thick. So then there I am taking it off. So I'm hoping that with this information, you can make your walls as beautiful as they were before the incident that happened to make them not beautiful occurred. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for that wonderful demonstration.